ไอ้ที่ In March 2013, a team from the Environmental Justice Foundation traveled to southern Thailand to investigate reports of human trafficking, slavery and murder aboard fishing vessels operating from the ports of Kantang. In 2014, a follow-up investigation uncovered a number of new trafficking and slavery cases, both at sea and in several other ports across the country. In the face of widespread criticism from the international community, Thai authorities insist that work is being done to tackle the horrific abuses that pervade their hugely profitable fishing industry. But EJF's most recent investigation in Kantang shows that it's business as usual on the open ocean. Slavery at sea is as prevalent as ever. ยอนะซามาซายอลอซูเนี่ยตัวอะไรนี่ไอ้เพมาเป็นเนี่ยเดยอบะเข้าเลยจ่ายเรื่องกูรู้ดูชูดิกะเลยเดดาเลยทุ
All the men interviewed in this film escaped from vessels owned and operated by the infamous Boonlarp Fishing Partnership Limited. Based in Kantang, Boonlarp came under scrutiny in 2013 as part of a high-profile trafficking and forced labour case. EJF investigations uncovered the torture and brutal murder of scores of workers whose bodies were weighed down with chains and dumped in the Trang River, hands still bound. Since then, EJF has spoken with numerous fishermen who have escaped from Boonlark boats. Many have reported ongoing incidents of extreme physical violence, forced labour and murder. All the victims EJF spoke with in 2015 identified Boonlarp's senior security guard as the chief enforcer. Feared for his brutality, he has reportedly murdered several Burmese workers. เนี่ยกูเลยบ่ละวะลีตาเลยตาเปล่าหนอบ่เนี่ยรอลูเลยก็ตีดาเลยตาอ่ะเมียล่ะตีดาผิดละเลยกูยี้ดิเนี่ย
so the Thai authorities were unable to communicate with the Burmese crew. After 25 minutes, the vessel left port unchallenged. Kantang is just one of many fishing ports in southern Thailand. The vessels based there make up a fraction of the entire Thai fishing fleet. Slavery and pirate fishing occur throughout the industry, at numerous ports and aboard hundreds of vessels. The profitability of the sector depends on the thousands of men and boys coerced onto fishing boats and into a life of violence and misery. Living conditions aboard the boats are dismal, and malnourishment and serious injury are routine. Fishers have reported being force-fed amphetamines to work 20-hour shifts for days at a time. Execution-style murders are carried out openly to suppress dissent and cultivate fear. Of those who survive, some will not escape the boats for years. As you watch this, thousands of trafficked fishers, like those you have seen in this film, are still at sea. The Thai government must take serious steps to eradicate environmental destruction and slavery in the industry. And retailers must insist on only doing business with producers who can demonstrate net to plate traceability and guarantee that their supply chains are free from slavery. To see what you can do to end slavery at sea, visit ejfoundation.org. I'm Jordan Bishop, and today is Tuesday, February 16th at 11 p.m. Well, I usually introduce myself as a flight hacker because a lot of the things that I think about all day are to do with flights. I help people get cheaper international flights. What led me to Chiang Mai initially was I remember reading years ago uh, in the four-hour work week, Tim Ferriss, the author, talks about a couple different places that he thought were really standout spots to be if you are an entrepreneur, if you're traveling, things like that. Uh, and the three that he mentions, <clears throat> I remember these like I was reading it today, uh, were Buenos Aires, Argentina, Berlin, Germany, and here, Chiang Mai, Thailand. Uh, and so, for whatever reason, I mean, because he said it, and he said it so strongly, uh, and with conviction, I just remember those three places as these are places I need to get to. Uh, and so being here in Asia and, and coming to Chiang Mai, I fell in love with it on my own immediately. Uh, so it was just such a natural fit. And just being in Asia, I love Asia as a whole, and being able to get to places so easily and cheaply, uh, I mean, I, I'm lucky that I can do that in a lot of places around the world because I have a, a really deep understanding of flights and how to get from A to B really cheaply, but you don't even need that when you're here in Chiang Mai, right? You can get to so many amazing cities for under $100.
uh, and in under three or four hours. First dollar I made selling iPhone cases on Etsy. Uh, they were extremely minimal, like the most basic iPhone cases you can ever imagine. Uh, and basically, this might have been slightly outside of Etsy's terms of service, but I, I had a great supplier that I found on eBay that was making nice iPhone cases. I photographed them beautifully and wrote up a really nice description and I sold them at a multiple and people loved them. What did the dollar mean to me? It, it was so much. It just meant opportunity. It meant, uh, you know, that the world was my oyster from that point forward, really. Uh, I, I worked on a Kickstarter project with a few friends of mine. There's some great stuff on Tim Ferriss' blog that you can read about Kickstarters, uh, which features Soma Water, which was one of uh, the really early successful Kickstarters. I mean, if I was gonna launch a Kickstarter today, I would just look straight to that resource and probably just do everything verbatim. It, it's amazing. You know, I had just finished school, but I had also just got fired from the only job that I had. I didn't wanna go into the corporate world because it just wasn't the right fit for me. Uh, and so I, I just really started thinking about like what are the things important to me? How, I guess it was the perfect platform for me to build the life that I wanted upon. Uh, and so I wanted a life of travel. I wanted to be able to move freely and experience new things. Uh, so I just booked a ticket and I left. I didn't have a business, I didn't have an idea. First destination. My first destination was here in Thailand actually. I, I started a backpacking trip uh, and it was really just to open my eyes and, and my mind to a lot of different possibilities uh, and it totally did that. Once I left I, I knew that moving back to Canada wasn't the right place for me, not necessarily because it's a bad place to be for anyone, it's definitely not, but just because if I was going to go back to that it would be back to my old routines, back to my own frame of thought and I needed to break out of that. And obviously if you're on the fence of making a big decision, the life that you're living right now is probably not the optimal one. Uh, but if you continue living that life for the rest of your life, is it going to be one that you're satisfied with? A life that you're satisfied with? Uh, and if the answer to that question isn't an absolute definitive yes, then there's probably some sort of leap that you need to make. Maybe this isn't the right one. You know, this isn't for everybody, but there's probably some big change that you need to make. And the sooner that you can make that change, then the better your life is going to be for the years to come. Two websites where you can look for the things that I'm doing. The first one is my flight hacking website for getting cheap international flights. That's called Your Oyster, which is spelled Y-O-R-E, oyster.com. And the second one, the publication featuring the world's most interesting travelers is called How I Travel. Sean knows this one very well. You can find his profile on there as well. Uh, Howitravel.co. Thank you very much, sir. You got it. Dude, I think that's going to be a great... All right, I hope you like that interview with Jordan Bishop. Check out his website, howitravel.co, and you can check out my profile and the five items that I always bring traveling with me. And make sure to press subscribe to see my other interviews with digital nomads, my day in the life videos, and all my other tips and tricks about how to make money online and to travel the world. Leave your questions and comments down below for the content you do want to see. I'm in Hong Kong at the moment, going up the uh, mid-level escalators. I want to know what kind of videos and questions and answers you guys want to hear. So leave them down below, press subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.